Good morning. Welcome to worship at State Street United Methodist Church. I'm Pastor Laura, and it is always a blessing to share in worship together. We are glad to have you as part of our online worshiping community. Give a shout out to us and one another. We're in this together. We also want to help you connect with the church. We would love to send you our weekly newsletter. You can sign up to receive it online or we're also very happy to mail it to you. Sherry in the church office can help you get connected. So let's prepare our hearts for worship.
believe that God knows our hearts and our needs always. And prayer is a reminder that we are in this together wherever we may be. If you have a prayer concern that you would like to share with others, there are a couple of ways that you can do that. You can post them for everyone to see, or we also have a prayer portal that's available on our website. And we have a prayer team that will be lifting up your concerns. So let us go to God in prayer. Holy God, we know that you are always there to lead us. Yet we somehow lose our way and fall back into fear. We confess that we have stumbled and we recognize our need for you to lift us up and help us start again. Forgive us our failings, restore our strength, and reconcile us with you, ourselves, and one another. Today we pray for our world that through the reconciling love of Christ, our destructive and violent ways may cease as you bless your human family with peace. We pray for the mission of your church that empowered by your spirit, we may proclaim the good news of the age and the world you so dearly love. And we pray for all who suffer that together with Christ and his suffering, we may find healing as he did, as he was raised and exalted in you. And we pray that we may all find ways to offer that healing to one another in compassion, in mercy, in kindness, in love. And on this Memorial Day weekend, we thank you and we honor those who have sacrificed those who make it possible for us to have the lives that we live. And we pray that each one of us may find a way to honor that sacrifice in one another. Bind us together, one to another. Help us to feel the presence of, and power of one another even when we aren't able to see each other. Remind us we are part of your body and so are bound together. And we offer all of our prayers in the name of Jesus and we can hear the voices of all across time and across space in praying his prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you for giving. Thank you for serving. As people of faith, we put our resources together and we are able to do so much more in reaching those who need to be reminded of God's mercy and grace and love. Thank you. Let us pray. Holy God, your love overflows in the gift of your spirit. Bless the gifts that we share that they may spread your blessing in a world of hurt and need. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.
For our scripture lesson this morning, I will be sharing from John chapter 3, verses 1 through 17. Hear the word of God. Now there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus answered him, Very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, How can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh, and what is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I said to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, How can these things be? Jesus answered him, Are you a teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Very truly I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen. Yet you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. And now may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, who is our rock and our redeemer. It was very early on a Sunday morning, and I was caught up in my usual and regular routine of getting ready for church. Right when the microwave was beeping, signaling that my oatmeal had been heated up. There was a loud crash and the power went out. We'd been having some pretty big storms throughout the night. And as I went out to the back door to see if there was any damage, I almost couldn't get out of the door because there were leaves and branches covering it. And as I slid around them to get a better view in the driveway, I found that there was a huge branch from an oak tree that had bounced off the garage and barely missed smashing David's car. So here I was, facing a Sunday morning with no ability to take a shower, no way to get my car out of the garage, and I didn't feel comfortable trying to take David's car at that moment either. Now, on a normal and typical Sunday, this would have totally freaked me out. Sometimes David calls me disaster girl because I'm really good at imagining and anticipating bad things happening, which usually don't happen. I pictured myself waking him up to say, there really is something I got freaked out about here. But I didn't. I was very calm. Why? This was March the 29th, 2020. 
just the third Sunday after the pandemic took over our lives so suddenly. Since March 12th, which is my birthday, by the way, every moment had pretty much brought some kind of major roadblock, some shock, some disorientation. Stay home, don't be with people, figure out how to do worship, learn new technologies, this doesn't work, try something different. The power going out, having a branch fall on your garage, not having a car to get to church, it really seemed pretty mild in comparison. In just those few short weeks, my categories of emergency and disaster had changed. Even early in the pandemic, and at that time, who among us would have imagined how long we were going to be dealing with this pandemic? Even early, I was learning to adapt and change. I was learning to see life and the things that happen in life from a new perspective. Nicodemus was on a similar kind of journey with Jesus. We know he wanted to have an encounter with Jesus. This wasn't a situation where Jesus met him, and he clearly knew a lot about Jesus. He knew that people were seeing him as a rabbi, as a teacher, even acknowledged that he was a messenger from God. But he had a lot of questions. Who questions? Why questions? How questions? Was he afraid to ask his questions in the light? Was he afraid to be doing this seeking in front of others? Or was he trying to protect his reputation, didn't want people to associate him with this man who was causing such a stir in the community? Still he comes, and still he asks questions. There's clearly something that makes him want to be there. Sometimes we talk about Jesus meeting us where we are, but that's not really the case with Nicodemus. Because Jesus doesn't answer Nicodemus' questions, at least in the clear and concise way that Nicodemus is probably hoping for. With each question, how can anyone be born after growing old? Can one enter a second time into a mother's womb and be born? How can these things be? With each question, Jesus keeps on throwing Nicodemus for a loop, keeps shattering any categories that he has, keeps pushing his boundaries. Jesus doesn't meet him where he is. Jesus keeps taking Nicodemus on a journey smashing his boundaries. Nicodemus is a Bible scholar. He's a leader in his faith community. He knows a lot, but nothing that he knows fits the language that Jesus is sharing. Jesus keeps speaking about rebirth, being born again, new life, but not in a way that can be easily captured or explained. Maybe that's one of the reasons that this is the lectionary scripture for Trinity Sunday, which is what we are celebrating today. How does it make sense that God is three in one and one in three? There's not any math that can explain it. We use all kinds of models and examples to try. It's like how a person can be both a father and a son and a brother, it's like an egg with a yolk and a white and a shell, but that doesn't do justice to God either. On Trinity Sunday, we are reminded we cannot put God in a box, and really we can lose something if we try. Because God is so much more than we can ever fathom, and that is good news 
because there is so much we need in our lives and in our world that goes beyond what we can do or accomplish or imagine, especially with our human limitations. Thank God, God is beyond our ways. Jesus does not allow Nicodemus to put him in a box. Jesus does not allow Nicodemus to figure out how it can make sense. Jesus asks Nicodemus to let go of what he knows in order to be reborn through what Jesus has to offer. And then Jesus gives the summary. John chapter 3, verse 16. That verse most of us know by heart, maybe one of the first verses we ever memorized as a child if we grew up being part of Vacation Bible School. And even if we weren't brought up in the church, we see it on posters at ball games or parades. John 3.16, For God so loved the world that He gave His only Son, so that everyone who believes in Him may not perish, but may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave, so that you may not perish, so that you may have life. If Nicodemus is able to hold on in the midst of this roller coaster ride, this is where it all begins to come clear, to make sense. For God so loved that he gave so that we may not perish, so that we may have life. When you put it like that, what else do we really need to know? Can we get to a place where that is enough, where we remember that's what it's all about? For God so loved that he gave, so that you may not perish, so that you may have life. Now, we don't always do a very good job of receiving that message. And we especially don't always do a very good job of helping to communicate that message to others either. Unfortunately, that verse can also be used as an instrument of hurt or of shame. Are you saved? It's sometimes the question that gets asked with that verse. And sometimes behind that question can be an assumption. Have you said yes to God in a very particular way? Have you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior in a very particular way? Have you followed these steps to find your way? And if that doesn't quite fit our experience, if our encounters with God have happened in different ways, we start wondering about ourselves. We wonder if we're valid, if our faith is valid, if we've done it right. Or maybe we feel like we said yes to that question at one point in our life, but we feel like we haven't kept up our end of the bargain very well. We've messed up, we've fallen away we've strayed, we feel guilt, we feel shame. But especially when you look at the context, it's so important that we study and look at the Bible in its context. It's pretty clear that's not the message that Jesus is trying to communicate in his proclamation of God's love. And all you have to do is continue and read the next verse. I'm not sure why we stop at verse 16. All you have to do is think about that indeed. That's an emphatic word. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. No condemnation, no shame. God's message is love. God's message is generosity. God's message is life. 
So maybe that can be a kind of litmus test for us. If there's something that makes us feel shamed or condemned, and maybe more importantly, if there is something we are doing or saying in a, or a way we are acting that leads another person to feel shamed or condemned, then that probably means we are straying from the path of Jesus. That may be a clue. We need to be asking questions of ourselves first before we judge others. For God so loved the world that he gave so that we may not perish, so that we may have life. On that March the 29th, when a branch <laughs> blocked my way, I didn't freak out because the pandemic had already taught me some very important lessons that I hope I still hold on to, or at least try to still hold on to today. On that day, I learned I could let go of my plans and expectations and everything could still be okay. On that day, I recognized that I could go with the flow and trust that God would help me find my way through. On that day, I learned and I claimed that I was not alone, that I was part of a team and a community of believers and that together we could take on anything, together. And so I called the music director to come and pick me up. He gave me a ride with him to the church and we didn't freak out when we got to the church and found out the power was out there as well and everywhere in downtown Maryville where I was at that time. We put a quick message on our Facebook feed that there was going to be a delay but still, we didn't give up on offering worship to our community that day. We knew it was important, especially in these challenging times, to help people have an encounter with God, to help people not feel alone. So I called a colleague, and actually it's at the church where Jonathan, your previous pastor, is now. And I found out they had power. And so after they were finished doing their stuff, they allowed us to borrow their space. And we recorded a service that we were able to share later that day. It was a little late, but we still had church. We were still able to offer an encounter with God that day. For God so loved the world that he gave that we may not perish, that we may have life. We do know that Nicodemus was able to receive that message. We don't always know what happens to those who have an encounter with Jesus, but we do know at least a little of what happened with Nicodemus. Later on, Nicodemus stands up for Jesus at a time when he is being accused and questioned. And it is Nicodemus who brings oils and spices for Jesus after his death so that he can be anointed and buried with honor and dignity. Nicodemus is not in the dark any longer. And this is the message and the power of God. God's grace still comes, even when it all falls apart. God's grace still comes, even when we have a lot of questions. God's grace still comes, even when we don't know all the answers. God's grace still comes, even when nothing seems to be going our way. God's grace still comes. For God so loved the world that he gave that we may not perish, that we may have life.
Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Gracious and holy God, there are times when we just need your mercy and your grace to flow through us and touch us. For those moments when we feel shame or guilt or condemnation, help us to claim your love that overcomes and embraces all. Help us to walk in that picture of grace that you offer as we encounter one another that we too may help others like you help us, that we too may help others to know of your love, of your generosity, of your compassion, of your grace, that we may have life. Amen. I'm so glad that we have been able to share in worship today. If you are interested in participating in person, we're here live on Sunday mornings at 9.01 and 11 o'clock. And we have a recovery program that is both online and in person on Thursdays at 7 p.m. We're grateful that we can share in worship this way online as well. So many ways that we can have encounters with God. Thank you for being part of the State Street community today. And I do pray that the Lord may bless you and keep you. I pray that the Lord may make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. And I pray that the Lord may lift up his countenance upon you and give you God's peace. Amen.